Okay, number one, what type of ions are produced by all acids? And the answer to that is hydrogen ions. I'm going to try to make a plus sign. I'm not always successful. Okay, uh, what type of ions are produced by all bases? Well, that would be hydroxide, which is OH with a minus one charge. Okay, uh, HNO3 is a strong acid. What does this tell you about HNO3? Well, the, the term strong, if you recall, does not have anything to do with how acidic it is, but whether or not it has a strong tendency to break apart. So since it is a strong acid, what it tells us is, it tells us that all the hydrogen completely separates from the hydrogen ions. If it had been a weak acid, only some of them would have, not all of them. All right, number three. All right, I have two moles of H. 2SO4, a strong acid, which means it's going to completely separate, uh, is dissolved in one liter solution. How many moles of hydrogen ions are produced? So the trick here is, since I have a strong acid, and since this strong acid contains two moles of hydrogen for every mole of hydrogen sulfate, if I dissolve two moles, I'll get two times two. I will get four moles. Seawater has a pH of 8. Uh, does, ocean, does the ocean contain more OH or H ions? In this case, the answer is it contains more OH. So the thing to remember with pH is if the pH is uh, less than 7, it's acidic. And if it's, if it's above 7, then it has an excess of OH ions. And let's try the next one here. If the pOH of a solution is 11, what is the pH? Well, in this case, the answer is going to be 3, because remember, when you take the pH and the pOH and add them together, you always get 14. So the way I solved this was I simply said uh, 14 minus 11 gave me 3, because when you add the two together, 3 plus 11 is going to equal 14. The two added together always do. Number 6, under what circumstances can a solution of weak acid be more acidic than a solution of strong acid. Well, the thing to keep in mind is what makes something acidic is the presence of hydrogen ions. That's what makes something acidic. So if you have more hydrogen ions, you're more acidic. So the answer to this question would be if the strong acid is dilute and the weak acid is concentrated. So in other words, if I have very little. Imagine one drop of a strong acid placed in a liter of water it does not make a very acidic solution, but the acid is still strong because all of the hydrogen is separated. Whereas a weak acid, if it's highly concentrated, there could be maybe 20% of the hydrogen separates, but I got a whole bunch of it, so it still makes a very concentrated solution, a very acidic solution. Let's move on here. Oh, crap. Okay, so I'm going to complete these reactions. We have three different acid reactions. Now remember, you can always tell an acid, uh, at least by the definition we're using, because it'll start with hydrogen. So all of these are acids. You can tell a base because it contains OH. So this one here is a base. All right, so let's just see what we've got here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look up the ionic charges. I'm going to say, well, this is plus 1, this is minus 1, this is plus 3 and carbonate is minus 2. Did I say carbonate? Ruh -roh, right? Well, let's try this. I'm going to take the aluminum, which is plus 3, and I'm going to combine it with something else that's negative. Let's see. Oh, I could combine it with bromine. There you go. So I'll put Br here, which is a minus 1. So the ratio is going to be, I'm going to swap, so I need one aluminum, and I'm going to need three bromines. Uh, so I get aluminum bromide plus. Now what happens is you might think, okay, now what I'll do is I'll combine the hydrogen with a carbonate and get H2CO3. But that's an acid, and you don't usually get acids reacting to form more acids. And that's when you say, wait a second, when acids react with carbonates, the carbonate breaks apart. And what I end up getting is CO2 plus H2O. Chances are you're just going to have to memorize that one. But, you know, CO2 plus H2O, that's something we've memorized again and again in this unit. So it's just one more time where it happens. Anytime you have an acid reacting with a carbonate, something that has CO3, you're going to end up getting CO2 plus H2O. The carbonate breaks apart. The hydrogen takes one of the oxygens from the carbonate, making H2O. 
and leaving behind the C and two of the O's to make CO2. Let's try next one. All right, first thing I'm going to do is ionic charges. That's a plus one for the hydrogen, a minus three for the phosphate, a plus two for the calcium, a minus one for the hydroxide. So I'm going to put calcium here, and that's a plus two. And I'm going to combine it with phosphate, which is PO4, and that's a minus three. So I am going to swap and simplify. So I'm going to put three over here. And I'm going to put this 2 over here, which means I need parentheses since it's a polyatomic ion. Got it. Plus, and then I'm going to say, well, I've got H and OH. And you've got to remember that H and OH really means you have H2O. So the deal is, when an acid, which starts with an H, combines with a hydroxide, or a base, which combines with a hydroxide, the H and the OH form water. Now our last one, I'm going to say I got plus 1, I got minus 2, I got plus 3. You know what? Anytime you have an acid reacting with a metal, it's just a single displacement reaction. So I'm just going to put the aluminum here, which is a plus 3. And I'm going to combine it with a sulfate, which is the only other negative thing I could combine with, which is a minus 2. And now I'm going to swap. I need two of these. And I'm going to need to have three of these. And since the polyatomic ion, I'll have to have parentheses and put the three outside it. And let's see who got dumped. Well, it would be hydrogen. And since it's a pesky seven diatomic element, it's going to be H2. Remember, any time you have an acid reacting with a metal, you produce salt and hydrogen. Now we get to the part that might be vexing you a little bit. Okay. So, uh... If the concentration of hydrogen ions is 10 to the negative 10, what is the pH? Well, so remember, what pH really means is the negative log of the H ion. Now, log just means 10 to what power? So if we look here, it is 10 to the negative 10th, but since it's the negative, I drop the negative. So if I just said, what is the log of 10 to the negative 10? it would be negative 10, this part right here. But since it's the negative log, I just take that part off. And so what that leaves me with is 10. If this number here had been uh, 10 to the negative 5, the answer would have been 5. If this had been 10 to the negative 2.8, it'd be 2.8. Now, is the solution acidic or basic? If the pH is less than 7, it is acidic, and if it's more than 7, it's basic. Since this is more than 7, the answer is it is basic. <clears throat> now the question is, what is the concentration of OH ions? Now remember, pH and pOH always add up to 14. So if the pH is 10, uh, what plus 10 gives me 14? Well, that would be 4, the pOH, the negative log of the OH is 4, which really means the concentration is 10 to the negative 4th, which you'll notice is considerably higher than 10 to the negative 10th because it's basic. All right, let's move on here. Which of the following substances might have been added to the water to produce this pH? Now notice this pH is 10, which means I have an excess of hydroxide ions so therefore, it'd have to be something that contains hydroxide. These other ones here, this would have made it acidic, this would have done neither, and this would have done neither, but since this contains hydroxide, it would increase the amount of hydroxide, giving it pH that's uh, greater than 7. Now, what am I going to do? I am going to calculate the pH of the solutions with the following concentration of hydrogen ions. So basically, I'm given a concentration in moles per liter, and all I have to do is figure out is 10 to what, what number is this and take the negative. So I'm just going to take the negative log of each of these numbers. So what I have to do then is with my calculator, I'm going to say uh, minus log. Now your log button is right next to your 7 button if you're using a TI calculator, just over there on the left next to the 7th. So I take negative log, now I enter 7.3 EE 
minus 4 and when I hit enter I'll see that the answer is 3 point let's make it 1 4 I'm going to do the same thing uh, with B I'm going to enter on my calculator negative which is below the 3 button log which is next to the 7th and remember that thing is I'm going to take the negative of 10 to some power uh, that's going to equal this so then I just type in 2.8 E minus 10 and when I put that in there I'll get 9.55 and then when I say the negative log of 9.2 E minus 2 I get 1.04. And notice it's always pretty close to whatever the exponent of 10. 1.04 and the exponent is negative 2. 9.5 and the exponent is negative 10. Uh, 3.14 and the exponent was negative 4. Now let's see what we do with the next part of this here. Uh, use the following pH value to calculate the concentration of H ions in each solution. Emulsifier. So now I want to do the opposite of taking the negative log. So if you look at your calculator at the log button, look at the sec second function. You'll see that the second function is 10 to the x. So it's the opposite of taking the log. But remember, uh, p doesn't mean the log of; it means the negative log of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this value here, and I'm going to make sure that I put a negative here. So what I'm going to do. For, for this first one here, to find this answer, what I'm going to say is 10 to the negative 12.6. And when I put that into my calculator, uh, what I'm going to get here, I better check the answer here, is I'll get, <coughs> I'm just put a little equals here, that, whoops, that's going to equal 2.5 times 10 to the negative 13 moles per liter. In other words, this value here in moles per liter is the same as this value as a pH. So I'm going to go over this next one and I'm going to say 10 to the, and I have to say negative 2.42. So I'm using the second function of the log key to do this. And what I'm going to get is either I'll get 3. 8 e negative 3 or I might get uh, 0 0.0038 either one of those is an acceptable value and for this last one here then I'm going to say 10 raised to the power of negative 6.8 and when I enter that in my calculator I'll see I get 1.58 uh, times 10 to the negative 7th. And that's pH for you. I know it seems a little intimidating, but really it's just it's using that, that log button. And if you have trouble with it, just come and see me before I just go and help you out. I hope you enjoyed your homework. And hey, you know what? That was our last homework for chemistry. Kind of makes me sad. I'm sure it makes you sad too. Next time we start doing this stuff, it's going to be with physics, which it's fun too.